moving the stock of a company and makes fortunes selling winter coats when global warming may be making a mockery of normal weather patterns. Tomorrow's Halloween, yet the temperature's still in the 50s in New York. Two weeks ago, it was in the 70s. Frankly, it's wonderful out, but that is not the kind of weather that makes people feel compelled to buy snow boots or a parka. Which brings me to Columbia Sportswear. The footwear and apparel company you know is Columbia, Sorrel, Mountain Hardware, Prana, among a host of other brands. Their biggest business is high-tech coats that can keep you warm without making you super sweaty, and winter boots that keep your feet feeling cozy even when it's freezing outside. Columbia Sportswear stock has held up surprisingly well ever since the Sports Authority went under last year and the whole athletic apparel space went into a tailspin. Stock's actually up a bit versus where it was trading when Sports Authority collapsed, making a much better performer than Nike or Under Armour. Stock has gotten dinged of late. It was down buck 55 today. So can Columbia triumph over adversity or should we be concerned about the warm weather, the weakness among so many of the company's distributors, and the high cost of embracing di digital? Let's take a closer look with Tim Boyle, the president and CEO of Columbia Sportswear, get a better sense of the quarter and the company's prospects. Mr. Boyle, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. It's great to be with you. All right, Tim, I'm thinking, and I, when I go through the, the notes, that actually what you've been able to do is de-winterize the company and also somehow become less immune to the problems of the sport, the brick-and-mortar sporting goods chain. How have you been able to do that? Well, you know, uh, we've been very focused on making our business de-winterize. Now, that, that's not to say that it, it isn't terrific for us when it's, when it's cold and snowy, but, but it's been a very keen focus for us. And, uh, you know, it, it, as it relates to the, um, the business of losing customers due to industry impact, et cetera, that's when you really need to have a balance sheet. And, and we've been very fortunate to amass a, a very strong balance sheet. And we have a very strong business around the world. So the U.S. is only still about 60 percent of our business. And, uh, you know, we, the U.S., frankly, is one of the areas where there's been much more significant impact on uh, by the internet uh, and the US as you remember has about six times as many retail stores right. per square foot uh, per capita than Europe and uh, so it's navigating all these parts of the world and all these various uh, economic impacts which are going to be important and, and again it's important to have a balance sheet to, to navigate this stuff now I also think that because my kids are big users of your of your product and you know, I've mentioned you, my daughter lives out in Oregon, but they, they say, listen, if this is a little more experiential uh, than it is just clothes. Uh, in the same way that they love to go to REI, they love to buy Columbia stuff because it means that they are not just walking to school or walking to work. It means that they're climbing. It means that they're hiking. And you're part of that. Well, you know, it's nobody needs another brand of footwear or apparel, regardless of how impactful our products are. It's about being different, and it's about differentiating yourselves from from others. And frankly, we've done that uh, in many ways. Obviously, the product is key, but it's about using uh, personalities like my mother, who stars in our TV commercials. It's about being connected with Macklemore. My mom just did a, a really interesting. Uh, collaboration with the Efron brothers, Zach and Dylan. And you may remember we did a, a really interesting uh, collaboration with Disney and the Star Wars last year, which was very successful for us. And, and we're doing another one, which will be debuted here soon. But it's about differentiating yourself, obviously making great, spectacular products, but it's about being different. Well, but you're also doing uh, something that uh, a lot of companies have to do. In this case, it's, it's pro uh, Project Connect in order to be able to make the gross margins go higher. Well, we need to tell our story more frequently. You know, our marketing spend is only around 5% of sales. Some of our competitors spend up to 12. We don't think we need to spend that much, but we need to find more capital to spend on marketing. And frankly, we need to be more profitable. So we've been in business for a long time. We have legacy activities uh, which are not moving the business forward. We need to uncover those, allow our employees to really talk about those areas of the business which are not helping and, and maybe holding us back, and allow for the business to grow, become more profitable, and throw off more money for marketing. So we want to tell our story better. Is that one of the reasons why uh, uh, I'm going to maybe mispronounce his name, but Franco Fogliato is coming from Europe? Because the turnaround in Europe has been pretty stark. Well, we've, you know, as, as we've talked in the past about our European challenges, mm -hmm. and it's, it's difficult to run a business thousands of miles away without really good people. And Franco 
joined our company about four years ago, quickly saw the issues that were impacting our business in Europe, and we said, Franco, we need your help, and he gave us the path, which was basically do more business with our bigger customers and be more important to them. And he did such a spectacular job that we said, you know, please come to North America and help us take care of the same sorts of issues we have with our large customers, which are all terrific, but we need to be doing more business with those folks. Now, will it matter, uh, you've got this 4,000 pair limited boot collaboration uh, with Chloe. I mean, is this the kind of thing where, where it kind of shines a light on the special things that you do? It's not gimmicky, but I mean, it's something that I think people need to know about you guys. Well, you know, the, the Chloe thing was really interesting because it, the Sorel product, as you know, it's become much more fashionable due to our great team there, but it's really a utility product. And it's great to be recognized that there's something there about Sorel by a, a prestigious fashion house like Chloe. And, and that's been a real fun project together. And I wish I could take credit for it, but frankly, it's a lot of really hard work by our teams in Portland. Well, you guys have done a magnificent job against some, even down to getting the credits, credit right, balancing credit, because, boy, there's some guys really hurting in your industry. You're not one of them. Tim Boyle, president and CEO of Columbia Sports, who remains just a terrific company with a very good stock. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.